In this video, we're going to take a look at creating animations inside of Inventor's presentation environment. So here I have creating animations.ipn, and this has our finished loader.iam loaded into scene one. Now I'm going to make an explosion video here. So what I'm going to do first is kind of just rename my scene with a soft double click, and I'll call this one explosion. Now, the first thing to consider before we really get into pulling this apart is what our zero point is really going to be about inside of this particular animation. If I look at my storyboard, we have an area here called a play marker. This is currently at zero seconds because there is no animations yet. And we also have an area here to the left. If I move it over, this is an area called the scratch zone. Whatever I set up here in the scratch zone becomes the initial starting point for how this assembly looks. So if I would like to change the opacity of something, if I want to change the camera of something, I can do that. If I click on the smokestack here, you can see the opacity becomes an available command. You can see that if I right click on it, I can also toggle visibility of this off as well. So you have certain controls here to do before you really get started. Another thing to consider is where you want your initial camera to be shown. If your view is coming in this way and you want it to be on the right hand side, and the cube up here in the upper right, then you wanna set it there and then say to capture the camera. Now there's no way to undo or edit a captured camera other than simply creating another view. So if I go over here and say capture camera, now that is my scratch zone for that particular storyboard. So let me move this over here again and capture camera. That's where I want it to start. Next up, we have to actually start pulling this apart. So what I'm going to do, just so I have more space, is just kind of minimize the storyboard here again by pulling it down. Or you can use your plus and minus sign on your storyboard over here as well. Now I'm going to start a command called tweak components. This can be accessed from our component panel, or it can be done by right-clicking and choosing tweak components. Now before we start just clicking on something, let's take a look at this command. You can see there's a move and rotate option. There is a selection filter for components or parts. There's a button here that allows us to add components after a tweak has been created. We have a locational triad here in case the area that we click on does not have a good UCS reference. And based on that, we could also change it from a local or world UCS. We also have the ability to control how our trails appear. Now a trail is essentially a line showing how something separates from your design. So you can have no trail, you can have a trail coming from all components, from all parts, or just a single trail. We also have a duration period here. Where we can specify how long, as far as time goes, that that tweak actually occurs. In the area here to the right that's currently grayed out for our trails, we can actually add additional trail lines, remove trail lines, and also control whether or not we add or remove full trails or trail segments. I would also like to point out that there is only an OK or cancel button here. There is no apply. So once you hit OK, it will cancel the command out. And basically whatever you did will work. It's just you have to restart the command again if you want to do another tweak components. All right, so let's start pulling this apart. I'm going to begin by selecting on one of these nut screws here. Now you can see the local UCS actually worked out pretty well for that. If I click on the other nut screw, you're going to see that it still works out pretty good. So I have some good up and down movement here and back and forth movement. But notice that when I selected this nut screw, the other one became deselected. So what you're gonna to have to do is if you want multiple components in any given tweak, is you need to hold down control and select more than one. Now that I have my components selected, let's see what happens if I change from local to world UCS. And you can see nothing really changed because my local is actually matching my world UCS. That's not a necessary change for this point. And now I just like to be able to move this out. Now we have multiple ways we can move our components. We can move them with a arrowhead here to move on the X, Y, or Z direction. And we also have planar movement. That's what this little flat plane looks like. If I had chosen rotation, then this would update to show rotational bubbles instead. So I wanna move it out in this way. So I'll click on that arrow and hold. And I can move it out in the Z a negative 120. Now you can see here I have my full trails being shown. If I wanted to get rid of a trail, I could click on this and click on the trail on screen to get rid of it. If I like to re-add the trail, I can simply select something on this part, 
which I'm going to do a rotation here to get to re-add that trail back in. Once you're happy with your movement, go ahead and hit the OK button. And that's going to create a tweak for you. Now, my duration there was two and a half seconds. That's actually the default. So if you look at my storyboard, I have from zero to two and a half seconds, a little bit of a green area here. That's letting me know that my storyboard is progressing. Now, if I want to pull off these tires, I'm going to start off another tweak components. This time, I'm going to choose component priority and select the entire subassembly. Again, holding control down to get more than one subassembly. I'll then pull this out in this way. I'll do negative 80 on that one. Again, two and a half seconds is just fine. I'll go ahead and approve that. Now I'd like to have both the tires and the nut screws move down and away from this design. So I'm gonna right click and use tweak components again. Go to components, hold down control. And this time I'm gonna purposefully not choose that nut screw. And I'm gonna move this down, negative 60. Now if I had forgotten to pick this nut screw, I can come up here and choose this button to add that component, select it, and it becomes part of that set as well, or a grouping. It might be easier to think of this as a grouping of components. I'll go ahead and approve that. And now I have movement going down. Now I'd like to pull out this smokestack and also rotate it. So I'm going to do another tweak components, choose the smokestack, and pull this out negative 120. I'm also going to go up here and click on rotate now and see how it doesn't stop you from having that initial movement where you might think that it would restart it from the beginning by choosing another command. But I'm actually doing one tweak here and now another tweak of rotation. So here's the ball that I would like to rotate with. I'm going to rotate this angle 90 degrees. Again, you can type it in. You don't have to use the full rotation to get it just on there. And I'll go ahead and approve that. So these have all been two and a half seconds. You can see I'm at 12 and a half seconds right now on my timeline. Now, once your tweaks are created, they do appear in a tree on the left-hand side. So if I expand this down, you can see I have multiple tweaks here, one through five. I have a different icon for a linear tweak compared to a rotational tweak. And if I expand those further, you can see what they are acting on. If you right-click on the tweak, you can also choose to hide trails, to edit it, to delete it. If you right-click on the entire tweaks folder, you can actually choose it to hide all trails as well. If you'd like to visually hide trails on screen, you can select the trail and choose to hide the trail segment for the current item or the entire group. You can also choose the delete tweaks here and also the edit tweak. And at this point, I want to keep exploding this, but it's really a lather, rinse, repeat scenario. So I'm not going to bore you with that. Essentially, you just want to keep pulling this apart until you're satisfied with a good exploded view that you want to have for your animation to actually show something going back together in an animated format. 